Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Strange Radios. My name is Jeremy. I'm going to run through very quickly a CD collection update for you. Uh, over the past few months, um, I've done my regular CD shopping, just consistently buying a whole shit ton of stuff. I uh, just haven't really felt like making a video, haven't really had time to make a video. So, I'm just going to do a gauntlet video today of most of the stuff I've gotten over the last few months, not all of it, and I'm not going to really get deep into it because there's a ton of CDs here. Okay, let's just get right into it. The first batch of CDs here I got at a flea market. Just happened to be wandering around, found a dude selling CDs, and this dude had... Uh, he had a, quite a few CDs, but he had a whole section of metal, and I don't know who got rid of their metal collection around here, but... God damn, man. So this is just a small section of that. Uh, first up, the Amenta Ocasis, I think. Uh, the Amenta is an Australian, I want to say, technical industrial death metal band. Uh, kind of take one part Job for a Cowboy, one part Fear Factory, and, you know, throw it together. And, uh, it's pretty close to this. It's pretty good. Uh, Battle Soul, Lay Down Thy Burdens. This is a band from London, Ontario, Canada. It's kind of a mix of folk metal, power metal, and black metal. All rolled into one. And it's done really well. There's some great acoustic passages on this thing. But uh, some great, just straight up black metal inspired stuff as well. Uh, Cataclysm of Ghosts and Gods. Um, I had given up on Cataclysm a few records ago. And when I found this at the flea market, I was like, yeah, you know what, I'll take a shot. And this seems like a pretty good return to form. Um, the previous album before this, I had listened to, and I, I didn't care for it. Um, the one before that, I don't recall what it was now, truthfully. But yeah, this one, I kind of dig this. Not the best thing they ever did, but better than their last previous few albums. Oh yeah, I should point out, uh, if you have any questions, because I'm going through these pretty quick, any questions about any of these, or if you have any opinions on any of these, please drop them down below. Let me know what you think. Um, what's this one? Empire of the Fallen Angel by Demon Sea. Um, I had never heard of Demon Sea before a couple months ago. I think Brain Smasher mentioned them in a video, and that piqued my interest. And yeah, just happened to find this at the flea market as well. Uh, just good straight up black metal. Um, Nordic Winter, Threnody. Um, I don't know anything about this band, now that I think about it. Uh, yeah, as you can tell by the cover, you can tell by the cover, it's a uh, pretty straight up black metal. Um, looks like they're from Quebec, if I had to guess. Up next, keeping with the black metal theme, again, all from the same flea market, uh, Satanic Warmaster. Opfer Blut, and Strength and Honor. Uh, I had no... Satanic Warmaster before these. Uh, I hadn't even listened to them, although I knew the name by reputation, because that's a pretty memorable name. And again, sticking with, I assume black metal. I'll be honest, I haven't listened to these yet. But this is a band called Lucifugum, I want to say, with their albums The Supreme Art of Genocide and On the Sortilege of Christianity, which looks like it's all written in Russian or something. So that has me intrigued. Um, if you know anything interesting about this band, or any of the other bands, let me know. Because this, this one in particular, this Lucifugum, I have not listened to, and I don't know what I'm getting into there. <coughs> so, um, that's all for the flea market stuff, pretty well. But we're going to try to carry <laughs> on here real quick. Um, oh, these are just random CDs. This is what I call the catch-up pile. I haven't listened to the, yes I have, I've listened to some of them, not all of them, but this is me just playing catch up, 
<laughs> That's all this is. This is John Zorn's Naked City. Uh, his weird jazz hardcore band from, what was that, late 80s, early 90s? 1989. Um, yeah, love John Zorn. No reason I didn't already have this, but uh, stumbled across it on my adventures, and I was, of course, going to buy it. Uh, Emperor Anthems to the Welkin at Dusk. Emperor is a funny story with me. Uh, way, way back when I was in high school, and I was starting to get into extreme metal, black metal in particular, um, I knew Emperor by name. I hadn't listened to them yet, but I had read about them. and I knew that Ishan was uh, the main guy in that band before they broke up. And a little while after that, I had gone CD shopping, and I found an Ishan solo album. And I was like, cool, I'll buy that. Bought it, listened to it, hated it. I did not care for it at all. Truth be told, I still kind of don't. But I kind of assumed just that's what Emperor was. I don't know why I thought that, but... So for years and years and years, I just didn't listen to them. Um, and then, yeah, people in the, me in the metal community here on YouTube, this is a classic, of course. So I figured out I'll listen to it. You know, I was I was I was fucking up for so long. <laughs> That's, it's it's a classic for a reason. That's an amazing amazing album. Um, Iron Maiden, Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. Haven't listened to this yet. Haven't even heard a song off of it. But I know it gets talked up um, by a lot of people here on YouTube. Mike Seaton in particular points to that album is being quite good. Uh, Fear of the Dark by Iron Maiden. Again, catch up. I've had, I actually have listened to this one in the past, and I do dig it. I know it's not their most popular one, but I don't mind it. And King Diamond, The Eye. I have not listened to this one yet, either. Uh, I love King Diamond, though, and it's rare that you just stumble across his stuff, but I happen to stumble across The Eye. I don't know the story on this album yet, like the concept of it, but King Diamond usually has a really good theme to his album, so I really want to get into that and see what's going on there. Um, just a couple of random things here. Bought this at a dollar store. The Evil Queens. First it boils, then it spills. Um, this is kind of like a, just a modern rock and roll band. Well, get mid-2000s. Um, kind of take one part. T take... Foo Fighters at their heaviest, and Queens of the Stone Age at their heaviest, throw them together, and then reduce the production budget by like 75%. <laughs> and you get the Evil Queens. Not bad. Uh, some good, fun songs, though. And it's pretty good rock, rock and roll riffs on this. I don't mind it. Uh, Beck. Stereopathetic Soul Manure. Um... I stumbled across this. I was in a, in a store that just happened to sell CDs. And everything was classical. You know, Bach, Beethoven, Mozart. And in amongst all of those was Stereopathetic Soul Manure by Beck. And I was just floored. I was like, what? Like, I've had this on my radar for a long time. I haven't really actively sought it out. But there are a few songs in here that I would heard before that I really liked. And so, just finding it randomly in a store like that was bewildering, but really cool. Um, oh yeah, awesome. Okay, up next is a band from Portugal called Alistair. They are a, a blackened thrash metal band. Um, they call themselves Old School Thrash. And, you know, it's... It's... It's uh, fast paced, it's thrashy as fuck, obviously. It's evil, it's grimy, it's dirty, it's gritty. And it's fucking awesome. And I know their CDs are kind of rare. Um, I don't think they've had an album released with more than a thousand copies of each. And I have most of their albums on CD now. I'm missing one. I, hope, I do hope to get that. Although it's sold out on their website, so, you know, we'll see how that goes. Anyways, this is Demon Attack from 2010, I want to say. And their newest one, released very, very, very early, 2018, 
Uh, this is The Dark Tower by Alistair. Again, Portugal, black and thrash metal. I would highly recommend this stuff. It's fucking great. Um, the vocals are just tortured and wretched, and the, the riffs are fucking powerful. Just really, really head-banging fucking thrash riffs. It's great. Listen to that band. And this last stack of CDs, random stuff. Uh, De Musinem, The Ungodly Defiance. I uh, bought this randomly, because I don't know who the band is, uh, just on the strength of the album cover. And it is just straight up death metal. They don't do anything really new. I mean, they're not reinventing the wheel here, but what they do, they do quite well. Um, this is, a, I think they're from, yeah, they're from Italy. And the concept of this record, it's a, it's a concept record, about a, um, a priest in Italy who left the Catholic Church and started his own sect. And then the Pope calling him a heretic and sending armies to capture him, torture him, and kill him. And it's all sort of, all the songs sort of play into that. And, you know, the actual story of the album is much more in-depth than what I can remember. So check that out. It's an interesting listen. The Residence, Shadowland. I went to see The Residence uh, mid-April in Toronto. Fun show, really good. And the merch they had, this was the only CD they had at the merch table that I didn't already own. So I bought it. Picked up a cool shirt, too. Uh, Death Grips, Bottomless Pit. You can almost throw this in. Man, has that glare been there the whole time? God damn it. Uh, you can almost throw this in the catching up uh, category. 2016 Death Grips album. Fuck, this thing's, this thing's awesome. This thing's so fucking good. You know, how do you get eight years into your career and then just start dropping the best stuff? I don't know. Uh, Burn the Priest, Legion XX. Uh, Lamb of God changed their name back to Burn the Priest for this album to do an album of covers and <laughs> the song choices are interesting but what I like most about it is you can tell the guys are just having fun like this is nowhere near a serious release it's just a fun record and I do dig it uh, Judas Priest Firepower uh, Judas Priest is one of those bands I've listened to on and off over the years and I've always been underwhelmed you know I'd listen to them and they had potential but they weren't really doing anything that was particularly interesting this is what I've been waiting for them to do their entire careers this <laughs> like the the potential they've always had has finally been realized in this album what 40 50 years into the band's history now like how do they how do you do that? But it's it's phenomenal in terms of like a, it's almost like power metal this album, but with an old school edge to it. But loud, well produced, memorable riffs. Yeah, it's great. Uh, Doctor Octagon, Moose Bumps, colon an exploration into modern day horripilation. Uh, Dr. Octagon, the Alter Eagle, Cool Keith. This is his first Dr. Octagon album in a long time. And without listening to it, I picked it up because I was super stoked. Uh, wish I had listened to it. Because it's not great. There's some good moments on here, but... I, it's not terrible. It's just not memorable. There's not much... staying power here. Um, a similar story to... Zarface and MF Doom. Zarface means Metal Face. Uh, although I do like this one quite a bit better. There's some good tracks on here. But again, this is... I don't want to say disappointing. Because I just... You know, what they've been... What both these bands and artists have been doing recently. This kind of sort of fits right in with that. So... It's not bad. Not amazing. Uh, Frank Zappa and the Mothers. The Roxy Performances box set. Uh, for those of you who are familiar, I'm a huge, huge, huge Frank Zappa fan, and I'm working to get 
his entire discography on CD. This is official release number 111. I have, I don't know, over 50, 50 something official releases on CD by Frank. And this was amazing. Um, the album Roxy and Elsewhere from the mid 70s is one of my favorite Zappa albums. So when they announced this, I was super, super stoked because that this is a compilation of the entire residency that Frank Zappa had at the Roxy Theater in uh, 1974. I think it was for one full week. Yeah, so you have full shows from two shows from Saturday, two shows from Sunday, two shows from Monday, a rehearsal, and then another show as well, I think. Just, yeah, seven discs of just packed full of one of Frank's best live bands, in my opinion. Like, just, they were all really, really good. Um, Max Richter, Three Worlds, Music from Wolfworks. Um, this was mentioned by To The Boy Ellis, Henry, uh, in his Best of 2017 list. He spoke about this album, and the way he described it had me really intrigued. So I did track down a copy of it, and if I had listened to this in 2017, it would have made my list as well. It's hauntingly beautiful, and just sad and moving in all the best possible ways. It's a tremendous piece of uh, music, this album. It's phenomenal. Uh, Coulter Wall, self-titled, full-length debut. Um, Coulter Wall is like a 20-something year old Canadian country singer who actually I was introduced to through a bunch of metalheads here on YouTube because apparently he's <laughs> doing well in the metal community, which is great. Uh, Colter Wall is great. Uh, very minimal, very bare bones. Deep, deep voice. A lot of people compare him to Johnny Cash. I guess because he has a deep voice, but I don't really see it. To me, he sounds so, so much like Gordon Lightfoot. Um, yeah. Go listen to Gordon Lightfoot and go listen to Colter Wall and you'll see a strong resemblance there. Uh, Lindy Ortega. Speaking of Canadian country music, Lindy Ortega with her newest album, Liberty. Liberty is a concept record, a narrative record, kind of, with, um, I mean, it's kind of like Kill Bill. Not exactly, but kind of similar. Um, Lindy Ortega has been one of my favorite country artists for the last few years. She's put out some great albums. This newest album is, a, is a bit of a left turn. I'm not saying it's bad, because I, I don't think it is. But I'm not used to it yet, because this album does not sound like any of her older stuff. And this one has more of a spaghetti western, uh, sort of <laughs> western rock. Not like a rock album, it's still country, definitely country. But it's got weird sort of symphonic moments in it that I'm sure are good, but I've only listened to this, I think, once or twice now. It's just, it's so different from what she's done in the past. I just have to get used to it. That's the only issue there. And the last one, A Perfect Circle, Eat the Elephant. Eh. <laughs> That's kind of a downer to end on. Um, I don't mind the album, but uh, it's nothing particularly good. Particularly, I was going to say particularly good. It's good, but it's not great. I mean... So long and thanks for all the fish. The doomed, disillusioned. And that's about it, man. Like the Perfect Circle Records had a pretty strong run. Now eh, they've weakened that a bit. But you know, whatever. And uh, that's 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 it. Man, my throat's getting dry. I can go to end this. <laughs> so if you sat through that, I apologize, but also thank you for sitting through all of that. Uh, I'm really, really, really not going to leave it that long ever again because that's not even everything I bought. That's just the most interesting stuff I bought. Again, if you uh, if you listen to anything on on the that you've seen here and you want to comment on it, please do so. Uh, tell me 
what you think about it. If anything you haven't listened to that seems interesting, leave a comment. I'll try to get back to you. Um, yeah, just there's a ton of stuff here that's, that I would highly recommend. But uh, that's just about it. Thank you for watching. This has been Strange Radios. Stranger. Adios.